Hey everyone, how's it going? It's a beautiful day here in Cleveland. It's a bit windy right now. But uh, anyway, I was going to do a quick video on the uh, Suzuki SX4. It's not running too good today, so let's go inside and check it out. Alrighty, so the Suzuki is running rough, but before I started it up, I wanted to talk a little bit about it and some of the signs and symptoms it's been showing. So the gas mileage has been getting lower and lower for quite a while now and a lot of people don't know this but a lot of times you have to reset your trip meter to get the computer to get an, a more accurate reading on the uh, mileage but anyway when you do the math uh, it's even worse than the computer has it figured out so I'm definitely losing fuel uh, losing performance somewhere but anyway uh, enough about that let's just start it up and see how it's running unbelievable now it's uh yeah this is kind of typical now it's running perfectly before it was stumbling and carrying on that's a little stumbly yet so i don't know if you can catch that or not if you were uh sitting inside it you would definitely notice it but anyway i have my cell phone here my old cell phone which i keep and I have a torque light, if I can find it. There we go. So torque light is going to connect up to the uh, Suzuki. And as you can see, the engine code, the engine light is on. And let's see what kind of code we can get from this. Show logged faults. And there we have a P0301. So that's the first time it's thrown up that code, which is uh, a misfire in number one cylinder. Normally it throws up, I forget what it is, If it's either 0420 or 0430, one of those. It uh, usually throws that code up that there's a problem with the uh, oxygen sensor or catalytic converter. But today it's throwing up a uh, P0301. But anyway, I'm going to look, take a look over the electrical system. Let's see if we can get this diagnosed. Basically, this is a misfire. So it's one of two things. Either it's a problem with the electrical uh, system, the spark, or uh, the fuel system. But anyway, I'm going to dig into it and see what I can find. So catch you guys in the next one. Alrighty, so... I figure this is probably either a bad plug, even though the plugs were replaced 35,000 miles ago, or chances are it's a bad fuel injector. So anyway, I'm going to have a look at the plugs first, since that's kind of the easiest thing. And uh, Yeah, these are 10 millimeter on the front, so I'm going to take these two guys off and uh, get underneath the air cover and try and get at these plugs. So catch you guys in the next one. All right, no matter how many times I do this, I always seem to forget this. There's these two clips here. And I should be able to pop this. I think I can pop this off up and out. So I'm going to put the camera down and try to wiggle this contraption off. Be right back. Alrighty, that thing is finally out there. There's my air filter. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. I'll have to clean that out. But anyway, that popped off. Um, I forget where it is. Anyway, you just got to wiggle the crap out of it. It's a bit of a pain, and there's these, uh, uh, these two little rubber detent things that you just need to pry up and out. But this corner always gives me a hard time. It's uh, this little latch. One of these tabs always gets stuck. 
but anyway this is where the plugs are it looks like they have these little coil pack things uh, honestly I do not know where number one cylinder is but I would assume it's this guy right here so yeah let's take this apart and uh, see if we can find anything catch you guys in the next one alrighty so these little coil packs uh, this is eight millimeter to get this one off and uh, I'm gonna take this off and we'll have a look at it catch you in the next one alrighty I'm not sure what size these are but uh, 16 millimeter seems to fit And uh, I'm surprised these weren't in here tighter. Normally I have a tendency to over tighten stuff, but these definitely were not over tightened. I think it's because they're so far down I wanted to err on the cautious side. And uh, I think you can, hopefully you can use these. Yeah, look at that. So... That spark plug looks pretty hammered to me. I don't even have my glasses on. But honestly, I think... What are these? My favorite NGK plugs, and they're supposed to be uh, Iridium. Uh, let's see, they're an R5 ETX, blah, blah, blah. Alrighty, so hopefully the camera caught a good shot of that. You can see there is some arcing at the bottom of the electrode, but uh, there's no arcing between the gap. So, yeah, this spark plug is bad. Uh, I'm going to replace it, and hopefully that will fix up the issue with the Suzuki. So anyway, I'm going to go grab a new plug, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Alrighty, so the only thing I did was clean up that spark plug. There was a dramatic improvement in the spark, and I'm just going to see if the Suzuki will start again. Hopefully it'll run a little smoother. Like I said earlier, I'm not sure if you're able to tell it's stumbling for a little bit, but even if you can't, that new tool I found, that air-fuel mixture, definitely rats it right out. It says it uh, switches over to a different loop, and that's when it starts running funny. So anyway, all I did was clean that plug up, and I'm going to start it up and see if it uh, runs smoothly or not. Oh, that isn't good. Actually, start it up worse. Yeah, she really didn't want to start up there, did she? But I can feel it already. It's not stumbling, at least on idle. And the RPM's already dropped down below 1,000, which is unusual. A mm, little stumbly yet. Yeah, it still does it. So, uh, me being the person that I am, I'm just going to start with the spark plugs. But uh, that's a little disappointing, but not completely unexpected. And I'm just waiting. For some reason, the uh, torque light doesn't want to... Yeah, it's not connected. There we go. So now this thing's working, and as you can see, it says closed loop there when it's idling, and it stumbles a little bit. It says open loop because it's not running correctly. So anyway, that's going to do it for now. Uh, I'm going to grab some more plugs, and uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes in the future. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. So I got some Autolite Platinum plugs. I was looking for just standard copper plugs, but uh, these Platinum plugs were really cheap. So anyway, I'm going to throw these in. They're Autolites, and uh, I'm going to check the gap. Uh, I already did check, and these are like over 40,000. So uh, I'm not sure what these are supposed to be gapped at. Uh, I think I'm going to put them at 35 or 40, one or the other. I guess I'll try 40, and... Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm going to throw these in and see if there's any significant change in the Suzuki, and I'll we'll take it from there. So catch you guys in the next one. Alrighty, so I'm back in the Suzuki, and I got Torque Light running in the background there. Uh, and let me make sure my connector, yep, my ODB connector's on there. So let's start it up and see how she runs. Well, at least she started up right away.
Oh. It might have been a bad plug. There wasn't really any stumble there. I think it was a bad plug. Alrighty, so this is a little difficult with this phone. And uh, sorry there, it finally focused. But as you can see, I'm getting some different messages there. It's definitely revving a lot better. So let me see if I can... Uh, let me see if I can get the fault codes in this, and we'll see what they say. They still have to be cleared, so we're still going to have the uh, 301. But that air-fuel mixture thing is pretty... Oh, just a 301. All right. We don't need to look that up. We know it's uh, an ignition and misfire in number one. So I'm going to clear that, and we'll see if, uh... It comes back up. Alrighty, so there's no fault codes, and everything does seem to be running pretty good. You can see the, uh, the engine light's gone. And yeah, that's kind of typical with that temperature sensor reading. Something isn't happy. Maybe one of the O2 sensors is uh, a little faulty. But just to make sure, I'm going to take this for a quick test drive and make sure that nothing is goofy. And hopefully my gas mileage will go up a little bit. You can't really trust these computers, as, uh, as I said earlier. So next time I fill up, I'll uh, reset the odometer and do the math with the next uh, tank of gas. But anyway, I'm going to take this for a short drive. We'll see how it runs, and uh, hopefully that'll be it. So catch you guys in the next one. Alrighty, so here we are with the Suzuki. It's the next day. I've taken her out for a test drive, and uh, she's running pretty good. So hopefully she's fixed and everything. Sometimes it is only spark plugs, but uh, anyway, that's gonna do it. And uh, check this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something I'm super super excited about. I just got it. So uh, catch you in the next one. Alrighty, my wife is probably gonna kill me, but I just picked this up today. I'll be getting the title soon. But anyway. I am so super excited about this. I love mid, mid, uh, mid-powered, mid-range bikes. This is a Suzuki GS500. I forget what year it is. I think it's like a 2004, 2005. But anyway, check this out. There's only 228 miles on it. Uh, it doesn't start right now. It's been sitting for a long time. I have heard this thing run. Uh, just in somebody's driveway, you know, just in the driveway next door, but I am super duper excited about this. Uh, I can't wait to tear into it, but anyway, I just wanted to mention that, so thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Alrighty, one last thing that I keep forgetting to put in this video is, uh, here's the old plugs that failed. These are uh, NGK Iridium plugs, and I think I'm done buying NGK plugs from now on. I put auto lights in there. They were uh, they were actually platinum plugs, but they were really inexpensive. Uh, I do not like these iridium plugs. Uh, it's interesting that they failed early. There's only maybe 30,000 miles on these plugs, and uh, yeah, they failed. They failed horribly, and I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but that's what I don't like about it, about them. On the very end, of the electrode here it's really super tiny so I wish they would just stick with the old style with the piece of like black you know carbon steel or whatever it was that they used to use but anyway uh, yeah NGK plugs I will no longer buy NGK plugs that's it um, I've been having a lot of problems with the le with uh, a bunch of NGK plugs I've uh, purchased over the years so yeah, I think that's the last straw. These plugs were oh, well over $40. I remember 
Uh, I got them from AutoZone, and I remember thinking they are, you know, crazy expensive, but you only have to do it every 100,000 miles, but yeah, not the case. Sometimes you pay more, and you get less quality, so uh, thanks, NGK, <laughs> but anyway, I think that's going to do it, so thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later.